You are a power user of Twitter and a pro you're <laughs> prolific and good. Do you actually write all your tweets or do you have a staff of grad students in a dungeon somewhere that have nothing but the Twitter app <laughs> to reach out to the world so, with? <laughs> so I take that as simultaneously an insult and a compliment. Because what you're saying exactly is your as tweets I are so it. awesome, you couldn't have written them. <laughs> But they're uh, awesome. This is what you're saying. I, right? Yeah, they're awesome. So who spill it? No, uh, clearly you could never. Okay. No, they really they sound like you, and uh, so I, I believe they are you. Sometimes you write, but the thing that I'm impressed with is that not only that you use it, but you 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 entertain with it. And you educate in, in 140 characters, which I find challenging. Sometimes Actually, I use 125 characters. I I because I, you, I submit to a higher level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. That's right. I could use 140, but that's for that's for amateurs. Yeah, that's for that's for the the hoi polloi. Yeah, yeah. I, no, no. Actually, I wanted to leave them room to retweet it. Right. What I saw was that when I go the full 140 characters and someone retweets, yes, they need room to have RT space at right. Neil Tyson, and there's a set of there's a number of characters that that requires, and then in order to fit that in, they'd have to start chopping up my words. You don't to want turn Y O U into a U, yeah, and T O into the numeral two is like no, I don't speak that way, right? And I don't want anyone else thinking I speak right. that way. I use whole words, Jack. Yeah, right? my my only my only exception is the ampersand. I will reliably swap. That's out a good an shorthand. That saves you good, two characters, particularly if there are two things that go together, you know, yeah. beans and rice. You know, yes, uh, you, you want to tighten that, and so. But why uh, do you use Twitter so much? Why you clearly spend some time on it, right, um, so I, you I, utilize it. It's a great question. I spent the first nine months about that, not knowing what to tweet, and I'd be tweeting what other people were tweeting. Oh, I'm filming Nova now. <laughs> oh, I'm having some waffles for breakfast now. <laughs> oh, it's a nice day in New York. I, you know, and I said, why am I doing? I'm an educator. I'm a scientist. What, what, what am I doing? And then. I had an epiphany. There is tweet number one of the generation of tweets that to which you refer. Okay? So this is tweet vector one. Yes. I was in the airport at the McLaurin Airport of Las Vegas. We're about to film a show on the brain and on how it gets fooled not knowing. That's why magic works because magicians know how to fool your brain. Yes. And why you think, oh, a seven hasn't come up in a while. I'm going to bet on seven. This is it's not how actual statistics work. And we don't know that, but we think it does. All right. Uh, my Death by Black Hole book had just come out. And it was, had, had a really good distribution, even in sort of airports. All right. And so I get to the McLaurin Airport, and I do the vain thing that any author does. You go into the bookstore uh -huh. to see if your book is there, right? <laughs> So I go there and there's no book, you know. So and I'm looking, and so I asked them. I said, uh, "Where's your science section?" And the lady said, "I'm sorry, we don't have a science section." So then I had the thought: It's Las Vegas. You wouldn't you wouldn't want any critical thinking going on before you go to bed, <laughs> right? <laughs> Shield people from any possible scientific thinking. Yes. And so I thought to myself, "That's a tweet." And I have those thoughts every day, all the time. In fact, I have a backlog now because I typically have two or three of those kinds of thoughts in a day. And so Twitter, is it is no effort for me to supply that content. Zero effort. And not because of the grad students in the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> the effort is I will hone it so that it fits my 125 right. characters. I will... I will trim it. I might add a little word that's a little more more evocative. Uh, so there's some. I edit it so that it sings as a tweet. But the thought that becomes the tweet, I have every day of my life. Another one, interesting. They got more retweets than I would have imagined. I was just sitting at a red light once, and I said, "Hmm, I bet that's red because blood is red." And you know, right? Dangerous. I saw this one. So I said, "But if if, if we had copper." For our blood instead of iron, turning our blood green, what color would stoplights be? Right. Spilled blood and danger go together. Right. And, and, and if your blood is green and the grass is green, 
nature is green, then where is the danger in the green? Yeah. Is the point. And so uh, that tweet got a lot of attention. And people said, oh, mind blown. It's like, well, I'm just having a thought here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me have the thought. All right. So, so I'm sharing the world as viewed through the lens of an astrophysics educator. Excellent. That's what that is. And, and I tell people, don't use the Twitter stream to ask me questions. This is not a question and answer service. This is just you're, you are e exposing yourself to my cosmic brain droppings, period. Nice. And so, so I'm surprised and enchanted by how many people fall. I mean, I just passed a couple of days ago 1.8 million and I'm th I want to remind people, hey, did I tell you I'm an astrophysicist? <laughs> what do, you do? <laughs> do you need to be reminded yeah. that this is why you would? And so that it tells me that there's, a, there's an inner geek within us all that's being stimulated. And I'm happy to be the stimu stimulator. Yes. Especially when they're just natural thoughts I'm having on any given day.